I was born and raised red-blooded American by Filipino immigrant parents. And in 2017, I had the opportunity to study abroad here in Taiwan. And I loved Taiwan so much that in the following years up to the present day, I just kept coming back as I just couldn't get enough of Taiwan. And I just loved being here so much. And at the ripe age, of 27, I've spent about two and a half years of my life in Taiwan at this point. Don't get me wrong, I love the US, I love being American, I love my country, and I love living in the US, but there are just seven, eight ways that Taiwan is just better than the US. Convenience. Taiwan is a very small and dense place. The entire island of Taiwan can comfortably fit, not inside my home state, but my home region of Northern California. But there's also a lot of people here, so everything is very compact and very dense. One of those things being super convenient is that if you need to go shopping for just about anything, you're usually no longer than a 10 minute walk from the store that has exactly what you need. And the convenience stores are actually insanely convenient here. They're on just about every single corner. 7-Eleven has actually good food that you want to eat at an affordable price. Get a hot meal there that won't give you food poisoning like in the United States. States, but because Taiwan is such a small place, it also means you get a lot of landscapes within just a day trip away. For instance, when I was living in Taipei, I could go for a bike ride, start off in a super dense city, bike along a very nice scenic river trail, go up into the mountains, and come down onto a beach. And this is all just an about 60 mile or 100 kilometer round trip ride. It's kind of funny because to Taiwanese people, a 10 minute walk is far. But where I'm from, in the suburbs of Elk Grove, California, a 10 minute walk from my house gets you about halfway to the bus station that won't even show up and pick you up half the time. Public transit from the local MRT to the high speed rail that goes all across the west coast of Taiwan. So the commuter trains that are slower go more places, but still very affordable. On top of that, the buses are almost always on time, they run frequently, and they go just about anywhere that you need to go. And the public transit, it's also clean and affordable. If you want to take the MRT in Taipei across town, it'll cost you about one US dollar. Or if pedal power is more your thing, it's certainly my thing. U-Bike is in every major city in Taiwan. It's run by Giant, which is one of the biggest bike companies in the world. And now it's raining. <laughs> A lot. I had eight minutes. Eight minutes to make this video. I love Taiwan, still hate the weather. Taiwan is also one of the safest places in the world. Taiwan lives by the concept of social harmony. Live and let live, don't be a dick. And while there are some negative aspects to that, the greatest benefit of this social harmony is that it is just insanely safe in Taiwan. You could leave your door unlocked, nothing's gonna happen. I leave my $4,000 bicycle unlocked, unattended, sometimes for an hour. Nobody touches it. And it's so safe that I can just free lock my bike and not have to worry about somebody in a van picking it up and taking it back to a chop shop. And my girlfriend can walk in any part of Taiwan at any time in any city without having to worry about her safety. It's something as an American that I found really refreshing because in the US you always have to think, oh, these parts of town are okay, don't go to these parts of town, this part of town is okay from the hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but after 6 p.m. you better get the hell out of there. And the safety is something that just puts me at ease and allows me to enjoy my life more because I don't have to worry in the back of my head whether somebody's gonna stab me for my watch. This one is just an easy layup for any country that even puts the slightest amount of effort into their healthcare system, but Taiwan's is really exceptional. And of course, there's problems to that on the doctor side and on the money side and how sustainable it is. But as a patient, it's really freaking excellent even as a foreigner. Just a couple months ago, I was experiencing some knee pain that I've experienced for about five months at this point. So I decided as an American, it didn't go away in two weeks or five months. So I better go see a doctor about it but I didn't want to see a doctor in the US and I waited to see a doctor here in Taiwan just because it's so dang confusing to see a doctor in the US and you don't know whether if you go see a doctor you're going bankrupt or not. I have a pretty bare bones basic healthcare coverage and if I go see a doctor he might refer me to a specialist and it's like, oh, is this specialist in network? Does my healthcare plan cover specialists and physical therapy and all this garbage? that is impossible to attain a straight answer to and impossible to ask the right person to. My girlfriend's mom, she uh, scheduled an appointment for me to go see a 
you know, sports physical therapist specialist, which is literally a seven minute walk from the apartment. <laughs> hey doc, I've got some knee pain. When I do this, this, and this. He said, all right, do these stretches, take this medication. That'll be 500 new time on dollars. That's 15 US dollars. Raise your hand if you're an American student that has lots of debt and would rather not think about it. I graduated from San Diego State University with zero dollars of debt. And that was only possible because I graduated in three years and my parents made a lot of sacrifices throughout my whole life so that I could afford to go to a four-year state college. And if you're not American, this is not normal. <laughs> my girlfriend went to a school called NCCU here in Taiwan. She paid 817 US dollars for tuition and housing. Now per month, per semester. For living costs, for tuition. Excuse me? Excuse me? Am I taking crazy pills right now? <laughs> People still make stuff in Taiwan. The first time I was exposed to the word Taiwan was on the bottom of an action figure where it said made in Taiwan. But Taiwan makes a ton of stuff, a ton of stuff that I'm interested in. Most of the mid-range to upper end bike stuff is made in Taiwan. 90% would be conservative. But then there's also countless small handcraft brands of people just making stuff that they're passionate about. Recently, I got into a bunch of accessories just because like this doesn't exist in the US. If you wanna buy accessories in the US, you have to spend a lot of money or you're getting cheap Chinese garbage. But here, you just go to the market and there's tons of people with tables set up that are making accessories with love at an affordable price and you can even customize your own accessories again at an affordable price. I got this custom necklace made for $30. That's another benefit of the density here. Everybody is just in here and you just go out if you want to meet somebody. It's right there. In the US, yeah, people are still making stuff, but it's at a much smaller scale and it's going to be very expensive and Usually it's just going to be through online. You're not gonna have face-to-face -face interaction. But in Taiwan, people are making things on a global scale and incredibly proud about their work. From bikes to a large portion of the components in the device that you're watching this video on right now, down to smaller scale stuff, clothes, accessories, custom stuff. And it's just really cool because the US used to be a manufacturing powerhouse and people used to also take pride in stuff that's made in the US and people still do but it's just much rarer. Taiwan is also very small business friendly, way more small business friendly than the US. The vast majority of places, of businesses that I go to, are small businesses. That is not the case in the US. And that can happen here because you're close to people that are making stuff, you can do custom orders, you could keep an eye on the quality control and make sure that everything is up to standard while still keeping the cost low. And that density also puts you close to customers. Like before, going to those hipstery craft markets of people making all these accessories by hand, it means you can open up a small scale shop and sell your small scale inventory. On top of that, rent is not stupid expensive for business owners here. Most of the restaurants here are local restaurants. And just to put things into perspective, there's a lot of good ones, but there's also a lot of bad ones. And the bad ones are absolutely not struggling at all to stay in business just because their costs are so low. They get so many customers. I've eaten a lot of bad food, but you know, that's the double-edged sword of being very friendly to small business. <laughs> but something I'm doing in Taiwan that I is just way harder to do in the United States because the country is so much bigger is that I visited and talked to face-to-face -face with one of these accessory uh, studios. The one that made this earring, the one that made this custom necklace. I like their stuff so much that I want to start selling them in the United States. So we're collaborating together to do a small batch of bike related accessories, custom made to my specifications. I'm helping them make more money. They're helping me make more money. It was just so natural. I didn't have to set up like a business email and call them on the phone and fly out to meet them. I just biked over to the studio, asked them, hey, can I do this? You wanna do this? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. Group activities. In the US, if you wanna make an event, have a group get together, even if it's just with your friends, you have to contact everybody. And then people are like, 
Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I might be busy that day. Uh, something might come up. I don't, eh, I'll let you know later. But in Taiwan, because of the social harmony thing and because people like being together, it is so easy to get events together. Most people will just say, yeah, I'm in. Like, people just like being included in a group here, like doing things together with other people here, and maybe part of that's FOMO, but regardless, that makes making friends here really easy. I still love the US, but I also really love Taiwan. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for next week's video where I absolutely mercilessly roast the problems of Taiwan. <laughs>